past I showed my old mouse driver, it was Steer Mouse. I've since moved on from there. Actually, they've moved on from me, I guess. They no longer support my older mouse. It's a Logitech MX518. So I've now moved to USB Overdrive, which supports pretty much everything. Um, they don't have a list, and you know, there might be some buttons they can't support on a device with 100 buttons, but yeah, any button I click on my mouse, it will take me right to it, even with some which it didn't have listed automatically, like the wheel click up and wheel click down. I just go ahead and I hit those, and it will tell me right here to add a button or other control. Just press it, and it works. And I found that to be completely the case. So this is any mouse, any application. I only have the one mouse, but I could, if I wanted to, set it to be just a specific mouse. So I could go ahead and you know, change that and set it up to be just one mouse, whichever I want. And I can set this up, left button, in this case, click the mouse button, but I could do all sorts of stuff right here. And this is just the general generic one. It's not going to give me use global settings because this is the, the generic one. And we'll go ahead, just take a look at some others here. Right click, middle button is the middle button. I could set it to be middle. Yeah, they don't call it that. They just call it button three click, which is you know, basically what it is. Or I could just say unchange device default, which is button three. So either way it would work the same. And I could do the same thing here. Um, launch application, open file or folder, you know, all sorts of different stuff. And it lets me do it real nice. Yeah, you know, this I have hide. I have my button eight. I have a bunch of different buttons on here and click up and down. I have set to resize with another program. Um, I have my left and right mouse buttons, which are button four and five, and I just click those on the mouse. I'm doing that right there, and we'll change it. What those do is allow me to you know, go through tabs quickly. So let's go ahead. I'm going to open up pages here. I have tabs going across, and I could just use my mouse button to go across tabs. Other programs, though, I might not want it to be used for tabs. There, I just hit the hide button. I might want it to be moving up and down a list. And so if I don't want this for you know, a specific program, I can change this to any program I want. And I could go ahead and, and use it on that program. For example, in pages, do I have anything set up specific there? I've used global settings. There we go. For the middle button, it's command shift I. Let's go ahead and compare that to, um, oh, I know I have it running. I have, um, ScreenFlow running for its middle button, it's Control T. Well, why do I want those to be different? For me, middle button is generally show or hide. And if I go and I look at a mail program, that middle button is, well, use global settings. Well, I guess I don't have show and hide that set up on that one. But if I look up Entourage, there we go, Command Shift O, that's show and hide in Entourage. But let's go ahead and look at the middle button, how it's different in a few programs. So if I go into ScreenFlow, here it is, my amazing video. And I could go ahead and zoom in and out of that. This is, yeah, five-second video. If I have it where, especially for a longer video, it may go way off the screen here. And I don't want to scroll back and forth to see it. I hit that middle click to show all, and it does the hotkey that does that. I could hit hide. But in another program, say Pages, let's go ahead. I'll use my buttons to get over to there. This right here, I just have some gibberish text in there. I want to show and hide invisible items. Well, there they are right there. I have a space and I have a paragraph mark. And if I put tabs in there, it's going to show tabs. Show and hide those. Boom, just works. So I could go ahead and use the back and forth buttons, the previous and next, and use my show and hide. And even though how I define next and previous might be a little different, or how I define show and hide may be a little bit different, you you could go ahead and set those up however you want them for any different program. And so these are you know, programs that I use fairly often. And so I have them set up. You know, if I go into VLC player and you can see right here, command three goes ahead, and changes the size on it. Um, button four and button five allow me to skip forward and backwards by I think it's 10 seconds. And of course I could configure that if I wanted to in VLC and yeah, makes it real nice. Vienna is an RSS reader. And I know I have things set up there differently. Yeah, Command Shift K that um, shows and hides stuff. So, and up and down, I just wanted to move up and down the list there. I don't want it to go between tabs. So it allows me to have a whole lot of control, pretty easy to set up. One area where I found it a little bit of a challenge to set up, if I'm in my any mouse, any application, the way you create a new one of these is just say new duplicate settings. So it'll duplicate 
whatever settings you have. And I can then pick any program. These are the programs I have running right now. So script editor is running. Okay, I could go ahead and click on there. And it's not one of the ones I already had set. When I go ahead and I set that though, it's just saying click mouse button. Well, if I change my generic one, it's not going to change these. So I like having them to be use global settings. So what was my method for doing that? I wanted to come up with sort of a clever way of getting around it if I could. Let's go ahead and just delete settings. What I did, yeah, script editor, just go ahead and get rid of it. I don't need that one. I could export it and import it if I wanted to get rid of stuff. But what I did is I created any mouse use global settings. Now, on each one of these, use global all the way down for every single button. I just have use global. So what I can do when I want to add a new program, usually I'm going to keep most of them global, but I could go into use global settings, new duplicate settings. Again, we'll, we'll use Apple script as the example, or I could use anything else. Doesn't really matter. Um, Apple script there, oh, script editor, I mean, use script editor. And now it is set up to use global settings. And maybe I want the middle mouse button there to do something else. I wanted to type a character. And yeah, I could have it do that and just mash down. Oop. Whatever. Hey, type my character. Type a character. Oh, I'm used to the press key. I really don't know what the type of character does. I haven't used that one. Um, type a single character. So. What's the difference? Um, I don't know. Oh, it is slower than press key and releases the press key immediately. Um, okay, so that's a little bit different. Hm, I haven't worked with that at all. Type character generates a character using the keyboard layout. Yeah, it's slower than press key. And I usually want things to be fast. So I'm glad I picked the right one. I could do keyboard shortcut. Yeah, whatever I wanted for it. In this case, system control, eject something or volume up or down. In this case, I don't want anything for the script editor. So I am going to go back up here and just say, delete the settings. And I don't need for the script editor, but there we have these ones I do use. These are all, you know, real world programs that I use. Each one having settings that I want allows me to jump from program to program and use it the way I want to use it. For Chrome, for, um, for Firefox, for Safari, all of the tabs just work. And the same thing with other programs in here should also add, I just put this in, I should also add Photoshop so I can move between tabs there. And I've, there's other programs I will add tabs to and add other customization. But just even in the first day, these are programs like, okay, I've wanted to go ahead and get these set up and they're set up the way I want. And I'm sure I'll tweak that a little bit. Also, one nice thing, if I decide, you know what, with pages, I don't want to have the special setting. I could go ahead and just disable it for pages. And then, yeah, for mail, it's enabled pages disabled. I wish it gave us more information on which ones were enabled and disabled. I wish it gave me a left button, global, you know, some symbol or whatever to let me know which ones were modified and which ones weren't. So I do see some room for possible improvement, but overall really great, um, really great program and really lets me customize my mouse usage in a way that, that wouldn't be possible without something like USB overdrive.